Good afternoon, everybody. Rose Thorne here. So today I'm doing a commentary video where I wanted to offer up my thoughts on Foodie Beauty, Pete, and Natter, and how I feel they're all in cahoots with each other, and that this whole thing between all three of them is an absolute scam. To support that, I want to point out the timeline of things that have recently happened. And that way you guys know where I'm coming from. So let's go all the way back to the live stream that Pete's did, where in the live stream he mentioned that the cat litter boxes had not been changed in two months. Anyone who's ever owned a cat knows that's completely unacceptable. That is far too long for a cat's litter box to have not been changed. There was a great deal of uproar over that. And I feel that him talking about that was deliberate because by him talking about it and mentioning it, it basically set things in motion for Foodie to do her live stream where she raged out about it. A lot of people were coming for Foodie, talking about the litter boxes and telling her, you need to go home, you need to take care of your cats. And of course she raged out knowing that that's what the reaction channels look for. They look for her rage streams. So in order for Foodie to rage, she has to have a reason. So she sets things in motion for to rage for everybody. So she raged out about people coming to her about the cats. Directly after that, Pete's did a live stream called Depression. I'm sure everybody's heard about it, where the live stream itself, the video itself, I mean, was very disturbing, very upsetting, and very concerning for a lot of people. Because there are a lot of people in the world that suffer from depression. I don't doubt that Pete suffers from depression. But in that particular video, he used a lot, and I mean a lot, of very strong language, a lot of strong terms that he wasn't just down. He was actually in the neighborhood of hurting himself. You know, he said a lot of things that raised the red flag that got people very, very concerned. He was saying that things are very dark. Uh, I don't know how much longer I can hold on. Uh, I don't have any hope. I mean, if you go back to the video, you can pinpoint quite a few things that he said that got people very, very concerned to the point where somebody actually called the police for a wellness check because they were concerned. I mean, I watched the video and I'll be honest with you, I got sucked in. I believed it because unlike Foodie, Pete doesn't come online and lie all the time. So knowing that he has depression, when he made a video like that, I thought it was an honest cry for help. And I was just hoping for the best for him. So we did the video. A lot of people were very concerned, very concerned for him, uh, especially those that have ever suffered from depression. You know, they, you know, there's a lot of empathy there. So we did the depression video, which directly after that, Foodie did another rage stream. Again, in order for her to do a rage stream, she has to have a reason. So things are set up so she can and will rage. She raged about Pete's, uh, saying, it's not my job to take care of him. What can I do for him? So forth and so on. Directly after that stream, the very next day, she did two Pity poor me lives where she was crying over Natter. Oh, you know, all these things going on with Natter. Directly after those two pity poor me streams where people were feeling pity and sympathy for her, Natter did a live stream. A live stream that lasted for five hours. And in that live stream, he basically reacted to one of Foodie's earlier videos. Isn't that interesting? So Foodie took her TV over to Natter's and then that's the very same TV that he was using to react to her. Think about that. I think it's pretty obvious that the reason why the TV was taken over to his house was because 
there was a plan in place that he would use it to react to her. So he reacted to a video that she did that day, which makes you also wonder, did she do that saw video just so he can react to it? Was that part of the plan? He reacted to her video. And then directly after that, Foodie raged out literally all day and all night. You guys that are on my channel, you saw the reacts that I did to each of those videos. I mean, she was just literally going and going and going. You know, if you put all of those lives together between Chantal, Pete, and Natter, if you line them all up one by one from the latest video to the newest, if you watch them all back to back, the scam is obvious. It's pretty obvious that Foodie has both of them working for her and it's all about the money. Foodie is a very good liar. She knows how to manipulate people. She knows how to play with the audience. She knows how to deflect away from one topic onto the next. And by doing so, the previous topic doesn't get talked about anymore. She knows how to do that. But where Foodie is failing as far as scamming people is that she leaves no room for doubt. You know, she doesn't have that area of disbelief or something she can fall back on to say, well, you don't know what goes on all the time. She literally live streams all the time, every hour, every minute. So there's, she can't even say, well, this happened behind the scenes and you don't know where that happened. But that whole day where she was live streaming, Natter was live streaming, and I also forgot that during the ping pong back and forth between her and Natter, Pete's also did a live stream called You Mad Bro. In the depression live stream, he painted a very dark picture. Isn't it funny that the next day he was perfectly fine? He was perfectly fine. And when people were pointing out in the comments that it looked like a scam, his reply to everybody was, I never said I was going to hurt myself. And that is something that is directly out of Chantal's playbook. She's known for gaslighting people, for leading people on, for painting an idea. And then when people say, oh, I, I guess this is what's going on, then her defense is, well, I, I never said that outright. I never said I was a diabetic, even though I'm testing my blood sugar and I'm saying all these different things. I never said that. Pete is learning from Chantal. He's learning from Chantal. Everything he knows about YouTube, he's learning from Chantal, including how to manipulate people. So the depression video that he put up, when people were calling him out and saying this looks like a scam, he deleted the comments, much like Foodie does when she doesn't want to deal with the comments. He deleted the comments and then he turned the comments off. Again, one of her tactics. So anybody out there thinking that this, there's not a whole scam going on, you're wrong. There is. And Foodie, uh, Natter and Pete, they're all in on it together. Foodie is the employer. Natter and Pete are the employees. I feel that Pete's account is under her name. Natter's account is certainly under her name. She gets all the money. And because both of them depend on her, they do what she says. If she talks to them and says, this is what we're going to do today or this week to make the money, they're going to go along with it because they both put themselves in a position where they depend on her. So since she's the one doling out the money, they're going to go along with whatever her plan is. Pete's is easily influenced by Chantal. He does whatever she asked him to do. And I would also like to remind everyone that once upon a time, Chantal approached Pete's about quitting his job and working for her on YouTube. At the time, he did not take her up on it. He had his job. He was making his own money. but now that he doesn't have a job, of course he needs money. So he might have taken Chantal up on her offer and just quietly behind the scenes signed on to the whole program. For quite a while, Chantal, she did everything herself. 
She did her mukbang. She made her own money. She made her own drama. She took it as far as she could possibly go alone. She brought on as many toxic topics as she could alone. But once she hit the ceiling with what she could do by herself, she invited more people into the drama to keep it going and to keep it interesting. Because just doing things by yourself, there's only so much you can do. But the more people you bring in, the more opportunities for more stories, for more drama. And on YouTube, for her, drama makes money. That's how she supports herself. So again, anyone who questions about, is this whole thing a scam? The answer is yes. And the proof of that is in all the lives that happened between two days, between the time that Pete's revealed that the litter boxes were not being changed, all the way up till the day where Chantal was raging at Natter and they were going back and forth and Pete's did his live in between that. I mean, you, again, line it all up. Look at those lives in a timeline from the latest to the, the most current one, and you'll see it's, it's, it's so obvious. It's so obvious it's a scam. It's so obvious. You know, they're, they're, they're all triple teaming each other. One person will live stream, and the next person will live stream after that. Sometimes they live stream on top of each other to keep the drama going, to get the interest going. And now Pete is involved in the game. Uh, he's not interested in getting a regular job, making his own money. You know, he wants a piece of the action with Booty. So he just signed on to the whole deal. I think it's shameful that uh, Pete suffers from depression and he did the video when he got everybody really concerned for him. Uh, and then the very next day, it was obvious that he lied. Uh, again, not saying he doesn't suffer from depression, but that day that he did the depression video, and this is something I want to point out, the very night that he did the depression video, that same night, he was on Twitter warring around with people, just going back and forth with people. He was severely depressed, he said, and in a very dark place, but he had enough energy to go on Twitter and fight with people. And then the very next day, he's fine. He's talking to people. Hmm. It doesn't look right, does it? Uh, generally, people that are highly depressed, they, they get surrounded by the feeling of hopelessness and darkness, and they can't focus on anything, let alone something like Twitter. Twitter is a war zone. So again, you look at all these different components and it just, it just doesn't look right. This is December. This is the month of the year where YouTubers make the most money. So of course, Chantal is live streaming like crazy. And now she's having Natter live stream with her. Again, just trying to up that profit. But it's pretty obvious that, you know, th there, there's a multi-layered scam going on here between all three. They're all three in on it. I don't think Pete's and Natter have as much of a problem with each other as we're led to believe. I mean, they're just employees of the same employer and they barely have any contact. You know, it's all manufactured drama. It's all BS. So anybody out there that you might be thinking that this thing is real, that the drama between Chantal and, and Natter and Pete's is real, I'm telling you right now, it's not. They're all just in it together to make the most money. And they don't even have the good sense to just take a break and make it seem believable. They just live stream on top of each other. And the more they do that, the more obvious it's a scam. It's a scam now. It's going to be a scam later. And it's going to be a scam into the future. So what do you guys think? What do you guys think about all this crap? Because that's exactly what it is. It's crap. We're, it's, it's on YouTube. Uh, with Chantal, Natter, and Pete, it's not real. It's just them making up a story as they go to make money. How do you guys feel about it? Would love to hear from you. Would love to have your thoughts. Thank you for watching this video. And please have a pleasant afternoon. Take care.